Hi there, thank you so much for clicking the thumbnail and being interested in my work. In this video, I share with you my techniques and tips on how I do three stages to create this finished skin tone study. I go through the underpainting, the rich colour stage, and the final detail stage. So be sure to watch it right through till the end because here and there I'll be slowing things down in real time so you can take a closer look. So let's dive in and take a look. As this is a study, I'm just using a simple board, which is MDF with two coats of Michael Hardin primer, non-absorbent primer. I prime the back to seal it, uh, to keep it sort of moisture resistant. The second coat of the primer was a mixture of acrylic ivory black with the primer itself to create that tone to work on. Now I'm just showing it at this stage but the outline was done freehand but if you want to know more information how to do the outline freehand I've got loads of videos in my channel. I'll leave a link in the description below for you. Here's a look at the reference image I'm using on my computer. It's of my great niece Olivia. It's just a cropped image just for this study. I'm using Michael Hardin paints mainly. There's only one that isn't here and that's the Cadmium Red which is a Winsor & Newton artist quality. I'll give you the names as I put them out. So Titanium White to start with. This is Lemon Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Red, Elysium Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and burnt umber and the medium I'm using is the liquid original. Clear how I mix then so it's cadmium red and white to start with then a cadmium red and yellow ochre then a yellow ochre and white on its own then I mix the green by using yellow ochre and ultramarine blue adding white to that and then a brown and red and then blue and brown and that's how I lay my palette out. Now I use three brushes of each size there's three hog hair brushes number fours three number twos I use three because I use one for the lights one for the medium and one for the darks so it keeps everything nice and clean and not muddy just for the details at the end of the underdrawing, I'm using these three number two synthetic flats. First thing I did was just to ghost the outline a little by using the Faber Castell kneadable razor. Just starting off with the number two hog air round. Put in the white in first. I've added a little bit of lemon yellow to this just to give it a little bit of zinginess. Sometimes just white on its own can look a little bit sort of dead, so you just add something with it. So I used a bit of a lemon yellow with it just to give that zinginess, like I do when I do my pastel work. And then what you do from there is mix in then variations by just finding that colour on your palette and then just 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 dab it on really and just work with it. <clears throat> I mean here I'm just adding a little bit more pink to it uh, and then you see that green there I'm neutralizing a little bit with a little bit of that green I put a little bit of that green in it just to take that sort of vividness off so you have to play about with things and it's just a case of just going through blocking it in to start with this is the basic stage really what I'm doing as well is is actually uh, checking my drawing as I'm going as well because I've done this freehand so I'm always checking making sure just like I do when I do my pastels it's just a case of having a go and mixing it really and just seeing what happens but if it's too bright just add that little bit of uh, green now if it's a light pink you're putting on you want a light green with it to sort of desaturate it now if I need to change the colour, what I do is I get a piece of kitchen towel and just wipe your brush, just turn it around, just to get, take that excess pigment off so it helps you to control what you're doing then. Now I'm just using a mid-tone brush, so I've swapped brushes 
and I'm working in now some a bit of brown and red trying that see what that's like so it's burnt umber red mixture here's the view of the palette again just showing you the brushes uh, you know the three different tones for each brush you've got your light your middle tone and your darks and it's just a case really of, of finding those colors and then blending them together onto your surface so you're forever moving from one brush to another so it's like the mid mid brush and then the light brush you're only using the really dark ones for like the shadow in the nostrils there but uh, basically that's it it's just a case of just keep playing just keep moving the color around um, just if it needs a bit pinkier just add a little bit more of that cadmium red a bit more white just to get it sort of to the right tone and then you're on to the mid-tone brush again and so we're doing and you just continue a little bit more then at the side of that so it's a case of just um, keep keep uh, persevering really with it now I hold my brushes I put them in between each finger so the smaller brushes are separate then to the big ones reason being if you cut if you grab them together you're just going to get paint all over those big brushes just going to speed this up a little because I'm conscious of the uh, actual time I've got to all the three stages to go through yet so basically it's just going through everything now just mixing up the colors that are similar to it it's all intermixable just mixing the warm red with the yellow ochre and white and then just using a little bit of green here and there to desaturate it I'm using the green mix which is the ultramarine blue and yellow ochre and mix it in with the warm red now to create the shadow rather than using that brown it seemed to be a lot fresher and i went round everywhere then doing that similar sort of thing so you're mixing in these sort of tones all together and they're all intermixable because the green is ultramarine blue and yellow and everything sort of is very subtle and it can be changed very subtly just mix the peachy color for the background there we're using a flat brush number five covers the area more and, and and it makes it softer actually using them brushes for the background now for the underdrawing of the lips i'm using a bit of blue here to mix with the warm red which will create a cold red so that's what i'm doing here and then putting that into the lips then so it's slightly different to the skin tone where that's warm and in some places on the lips it's quite colder looking so you don't have to play about with you just adding that little bit of blue you could use a little cold red if you wanted to but for the underdrawing I just tended to pour a little bit of blue with it best to keep wiping your brushes as well so you make sure you haven't got too much pigment on there so it makes it easier for you to move around and easier to mix as well because if, if you've got too much pigment on your brush it's, you're going to take ages to try and lighten it with a white so you have to take that pigment away before you can mix white with it if you're enjoying this video, why not subscribe? It's absolutely free, and then you're sure not to miss any of my future videos. See, I'm not really that interested in getting the details correct at this stage. It's just getting everything into the position. It's similar to the technique I do with pastels. It's just a matter of getting all the shapes in the right place, ready for the next stage. I'm not mixing a lot of liquid with this. Uh, using a dark brush now, actually, you see there. Um, so you keep changing those brushes so make sure everything don't get muddy and then just trying to work on these shadows here so I'm using the green and the red together and just a little bit of liquid you don't want too much liquid for those deeper shadows there I use burnt umber ultramarine and a little bit of red so it's just a case of swapping brushes over just making sure that you don't get too muddy on the brushes so be aware of what's light and what's mid-tone and what's dark and basically I'm just like I say just shaping things up of the underpainting stage so the next stage will be the rich colour stage Right, so I left the first stage, the underpainting, for about three days for dry and then I'm starting now the rich 
colours. Now the palette is laid out similar as you can see from the previous palette so no need to go into that. Um, but what I used to mix the background colour was uh, Elysium Crimson and Yellow Ochre to make a peachy colour. And it's a cooler colour than the skin tone because I'm using a cold red. And so that helps to sort of bring the, the warmth out then, having a cold against warm skin. Just using a smaller brush against the skin tone there. Uh, but I've not used a lot of liquid again on this background here, um, just a small amount of liquid. When I start putting the skin tones in, there will be more liquid mixed in with the mix uh, to make it more translucent, which I'll go into in more detail later on in this video. Now for the rich colours of the skin, so I'm using a warm red yellow ochre there, adding a little bit of um, liquid there just putting a little bit in not too much though i tend to dab it onto the um, palette first the liquid and then you know take a bit more off it then so rather than going straight in with what you get on your brush you just dab it on your palette first and then just see how much is there before you mix it in with your paint because you don't want to put too much in it makes it too slippery then you don't don't you don't you can't sort of work with it now I'm desaturating it a little bit here by adding a little bit of green. You can see what's happening there, just mixing the red and the green together. And if you need it warmer, just add a bit more yellow ochre and that does the trick really. It's just getting a balance between all the colours. You notice I'm not mixing it very thickly as well, it's very thinly. I'm just putting a little bit of liquid in there, but it's just creating translucent uh, areas then. It's more opaque in the bright areas, but as you get less and less brighter, more towards the darker, it gets thinner and thinner, the paint does. Here's a close view of me mixing a shadow up. Um, you have to keep playing about with the different tones, different tone of green against the red. You might have to put a bit more yellow in, in case of moving around in, until you get it right. If you would like to see this study as a real-time audio, real-time video, Please check out my Patreon page for more details. Link is in the description below. Now I'm just going to give you a taste now. I'm just going to give you a section of it and so you can hear how I approach it. So slightly different to YouTube. I've got more time to cover things. So I'm grabbing a bit of white and then I'm going to create sort of like a, a light white area there. Might add a little bit of lemon yellow in it just to create that little bit of a, a zinginess with the white so it don't, it's not too flat then I'm just going to put that in and there to start with and then I'm going to move into the red now, keeping the same brush, but just wipe it with a bit of a tissue. I've got some kitchen roll I use, just, just fold it up like that and just keep wiping it every, in between picking another colour, so right, with a bit of white. And then we we'll put that on here then. So, and then you mix a bit of, if you want it a little bit warm, you just add a bit of uh, yellow ochre with it. Just freshen up these areas first and it gives me an idea then of the other the values then. So I wanted to, I'm trying to create a chroma with it as well because um, so I'm not trying to put too much white in so I'm mixing the uh, yellow ochre and red together but make like a transparent mix on it so when it goes over what I've already done it'll glow a little bit. 
So that was a little taste of what I cover when I do do these videos in Patreon. They're a lot more in-depth. Even my pastel one, step-by-step, step, is a very similar thing. Every, you hear everything and every choice I make step-by-step. Step. So please check that out if you want a more in-depth look at my technique. It's just a case of using different subtle colours, just mixing it on the palette. But then just keep wiping your brush as well and to blend it in that way and also using a dry brush in between placing the colours down. Here you can see me using the cold red now just to put a little bit of cold um, colour into them cheeks and what makes a difference then. Um, the warm and the cold together it creates more realism as well because the skin tone is not one shade, it's all sorts of subtle differences. Just adding a little bit more liquid with this as well and just scrubbing it in, so it's very thin paint but it's transparent because that Elysium Crimson is very transparent and what you've done underneath shines through so it glistens a little bit so it gives it that sort of freshness about the skin tone. Now for the lips, I'm using the same again, the warm red with a little bit of blue, just to create a cold red, and seeing how that goes on. And it's just a case of putting here and there then some lemon yellow uh, to mix in with it, and and for the shadows you're using a little bit of sort of the green with it as well but here I'm trying a little bit of Elysium Crimson mixed with it as well so I'm trying two different reds so we'll try that in case of trial and error and just having a go and then you can always sort of you know change it up and these are the synthetic rounds I'm using here I think this is number four I'm using but just very, very small circles while I'm doing it. Similar to when I do my pastels, you're creating that texture. You're not just putting a line in there, you're just creating that sort of movement with the brush to create the texture you're looking for. And it's really important to get that softness where the lips start and the skin is, because if it's too sharp, it'll look like plastic lips. So you really have to sort of make sure that everything's subtle. So what you do is keep wiping your brush, make it a little bit drier, and then you put your paint down, wipe your brush, and, and then just use that to blend it in. Now for the darkness in the shadow of the lips there, I'm using blue and burnt umber mixed together with a little bit of red in there just to give it a warmth. Now here you can see how I'm mixing that vibrant red now by adding a bit of lemon yellow with the red, the warm red, just to get that sort of zinginess to the, that area of the lips. What I tend to do is mix in two places really. I'm mixing on the palette and then I'm moving it around then with a drier brush on the actual canvas. And if I need to change that red into a cold red, I just use neat red, a cold red, and then just mix that then with the actual warmer red on the actual on the lip itself. So you, you're sort of mixing in two places really. And then if you need to subtle it up, just wipe your brush and then just use that drier brush to blend everything in. If you're enjoying this video, why not give it a like and share it with your friends? It would mean so much to me as this would help the channel to grow. You might have heard this if you've watched a lot of my pastel videos. Now a really important part of my method is my approach to how to connect to the reference image and how to let go of the mind, open the heart and just relax and just let it happen. The more you open up your heart and send this energy to the reference image, you'll be surprised how much energy comes back and then this energy goes through you, out of your hands and into your work. Now these little touches here, it's very very thin paint, using that very small brush now, I think this is number two brush, 
and then just really subtly putting those shadows in by using the green and red together making sure things are not too dark as well because you have to be aware that the next stage is the glazing stage so it needs to be slightly lighter at this stage so when you glaze over it creates that sort of subtlety of this lighter colour coming through right now for the last stage which is detail and glazing now I left this to dry for three days and so it's ready now for the actual glazing now the colours laid down the same on the palette as previous stages I'm putting a very small amount of white mixing in with a small amount of paint because it's going to be put on very thinly so I don't want to overload the palette and then what I'll do is I'll mix a bit of liquid with this as I go along the colours out, same sort of procedures I've done on the other previous stages but just adding that little bit of white mainly going to be using these synthetic rounds for the detail stage but I will be using hog air brushes here and there which you'll see as we go along so pop your medium on the side of your palette like that so you can make sure you don't put too much on so I'm going to try and liven up these areas here so I'm going to use just see what it's like putting it on to start with just have a little play because it's all about playing really so let's get some medium I'll stick the medium there so I know where it is right so let's just try you can almost put it on on neat we'll see how I go with it so I'm just scrubbing it in really just putting a little bit in here and there you've got to be careful not to to make it too uh, glowy because it's you know it's actually uh, skin tone at the end of the day so I'm just going to put a little bit of white in there just to make it translucent mixing in the reds there as well just got to just play it's just because it make it makes it a little bit more glowy you see that's it you can see how that's changing that already and, uh, Because the paint is so thin, it's very difficult to see it on the brush. So what I do is I mark the brushes with like marks: three for the darkest, two for the mid tone, and one without the mark is the light tone. I really love doing this stage. It's very subtle changes it makes to the actual painting. It creates that chroma, but you can put that very subtle detail in and do the actual movement very similar to when. I use my pastels, very small circles, very small sort of marks, creating that texture, but skin, because the skin is not smooth, it's not like plastic, so you don't want to make it too smooth, but so, so creating this sort of, sort of random sort of marks, very small little marks here and there, it makes a massive difference to the look of the actual skin tone. Now when you've got your colour down and you want to soften it up a little bit, just wipe your brush and make it a dryish brush and just go over what you've already done and just softening it up, just moving it around slightly here and there. Now my focus is on keeping everything as a whole, so I'm looking at the whole of the reference image and trying to create that oneness, so I'm not trying to put too much detail in because it can look a little bit separate if you're not careful so it's best to always keep this awareness of of it being a whole so you're connecting to the whole of the energy and then just letting it sort of just happen and not be focused too much on trying to get every detail exactly the same mainly with the detail and glazing stage i focus on creating the correct balance of the edges and chroma so some areas need to be softer some need to be sharper and some need to be sort of glowier and some need to be more subdued so I'm checking all that sort of thing all the colors how it looks how it feels um, comparing one shade with another one color with another with what glows more than another one and it's just getting the overall balance correct 
Now adding that darker shade in the lips is create a more of a 3D look as well. So it's getting these these values right. There's four lights, four darks, and a mid-tone. So even though you look at it and you think, oh, that's dark, don't make it too dark. It's got to be the just the right amount of shade. Because if you make it too dark, it can throw it out throws all the other colours and the balance and the soft softness of everything out so you really have to squint your eyes to see the values open the eyes to see the colour and then just be aware of how it feels and just get that balance now to get the softness I'm actually glazing now with a hog airbrush so I'm putting very very thin amount of paint on there and then just going over the skin and it creates that sort of freshness and aliveness to it so i'm using both the small brushes for the detail but the softness i'm using those hog air brushes now it's really important to put a lot of attention on actually subtling the lips where it joins the skin because if it's too sharp it will create a like plastic lips look so you really got to soften those edges at where the actual skin tone meets the lips and the shadows is just important get that subtle shadow and there's a little glint just in the corner of the mouth there which makes all the difference just adding those little details in I'm just putting a bit of chroma in the nostril there because even though it's in shadow it, sometimes you can see the glow there and you need to actually put that in as well just to create that sort of realism and it's just getting those shadows just right and at the right tone that makes all the difference it's a very subtle stage this is it's it's quite interesting uh, it does make a difference and you forever just changing these sort of values putting white in here and there and and it's like it's transparent color and translucent color translucent means a little bit of white so it's not transparent it's just half and half so it's just mm, sort of changing it up here and there and it's quite intriguing to just get that sort of feeling and that aliveness and it just make this stage really does bring everything to life I'll just briefly go through what I did with the white top there. I used that impasto medium, which is quick drying, it's very thick, it's liquid, but it's actually a, a faster drying time. So I mixed that with the white. Now I've added a bit of blue with the white to create a fresher white. And then to create the shadows, I'm using Elysium Crimson, Ultramarine Blue, and a little touch of Umber. And that created that subtle shadow within that top. What I try and do is create a, a feeling of reality to the work but not a detailed replica of what the reference image is because it's more than just a copy of a photograph, it's a work of art so you, what you're doing is actually putting feeling, energy and expanding on that and enlarging on that rather than trying to put every little detail in here's a look at the study at the correct angle rather than being in perspective on the easel thank you so much for watching the video right through to the end please like and subscribe and if you want to see more of my work how about checking out this video on how to create panels take care and bye for now